This episode is brought to you by Mitsubishi. Generosity in our gathering, starting at 59,500 Cutlery Rios. Cheers to time, everyone. It's me, Hamid Al-Ammari, a.k.a. The Qatari Guy, and I'm back here again with another episode of Ramadan Q-Tips. Before we start the episode, I need to remind you to go on to ramadan.qa because if you want to know about everything that's happening, whether it's tents, events, and everything Ramadan, the answer is on ramadan.qa. Today, I'm going to be talking about dishes that rise to the occasion during Ramadan and become household names because every single iftar table in a Qatari household will have these dishes on them. Yes, they will. Otherwise, you're not Qatari. Dish number one, jirish, or as it's more commonly known, yirish. Because in Qatar, when there's a j, we sometimes turn it into a y. So, majlis will be majlis. So, jirish is yirish. And what is yirish? It's basically a bunch of stuff that keeps, like, they mash it up and it, and it looks gooey and, and, and brown and chicken bits sometimes and meat bits sometimes it's all like just mushy and, and, and you use your fingers and mushy. nowadays people eat them with spoons but i do it myself you know I, I'm, I'm old school i like to use my fingers another dish which you should be familiar with because it has been mentioned before on q-tips haris but haris is not always you know there during the year but in ramadan Haris takes its place on the centerpiece of the iftar table because Haris is something that is not to be messed with. Haris is essential in Ramadan. And what is Haris? Again, it's like this gooey, mushy, and then it sticks together. And there's chicken bits, and, then, and sometimes they put meat bits, but I like chicken bits. And then they put ghee all over it on the top. And it's glistening. And also, I like to use my fingers to eat. Mm! At ease. Yay. Another dish that rises to the occasion in Ramadan is thirid. Now, thirid is really thin layers of really, 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 really thin, almost transparent, thin bread that's dried up. Okay, it's like a crepe that's really, really dry. Okay, but then they put layers, 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 and 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 layers. And then they get a stew or a curry, zucchini, courgette is what I call them. Potatoes, I like potatoes. Carrots, some people started adding pumpkin, and then chicken and meat. And then they take that stew and pour it all over there. And they let the bread soak it all in and the layers just become compressed into like a thick bed of juicy goodness. <laughs> juicy goodness on the bottom. Okay, and then you take you take your spoon and, 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 and you just cut through the chicken with meat on top and just go all the way down. And then <laughs> they eat, baby. Layers and layers and layers and spoonfuls of thirty. I sense a theme of gooeyness happening in this episode because our next dish is another gooey, sticky, using your fingers all over it, madruba. And it comes from the act of hitting. Its name is madruba because you keep hitting it. And you hit it, you get like, it's it's like, it's almost like burgle. And then they boil it and they keep hitting, hitting, hitting. I'm not a chef, okay? I only consume the food. I'm not entirely sure how the process works, but I know that there's shredded bits of chicken in it, and they keep smashing it and smashing it. Madruba. Adru. 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 That means hit. 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 And you get madruba, which means it's been hit. Now, I can comfortably say that those are the Qatari dishes on every iftar table during the month of Ramadan. However, because we have such a diverse culture in Qatar, some of the food has been influenced by different cultures and have made their way all the way up to the rankings of first place on the iftar table. In first place is the samosa. The samosa is a traditionally Indian dish. It's little triangles and it's either got vegetables or meat or potatoes. And I like 
so much and cheese and help. Picture if you will, a fine doughy piece and a nice little piece of triangle of cheese in there that they roll up and roll up and roll up and make it into a little triangle. And then they deep fry it and then they take it out and let it kind of sit there and you get it really hot. It has to be really hot. Once it, once it cools down, it doesn't give you that same kind of taste. It's not as crunchy and, and, and cheesy and melty, okay? When you consume the samosa at Iftar, you have now become officially Qatari. Although it's not a Qatari dish, it has made its way to number one. Every single Iftar table must have samosa. So thank you. India for bringing us this beautiful thing and adding it to my table in Ramadan because oh my god I like me some cheese samosas, potato samosas, vegetable samosas, oh my goodness they gotta be hot and spicy mm. crunchy because when you break your fast water, first thing I do drink water immediate water 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 then coffee of course a couple of dates and then I'm diving straight into that samosa bowl because I'm the eldest in my family, I can stake my claim. Don't touch them samosas. Don't touch them samosas. Respect. Yeah. Let's move on to dessert. A Qatari dessert that is definitely the most prominent during Ramadan is Ligaymat. Lukaymat. It's a little ball of dough that they fry. Okay? Fried dough balls. That come out. And then they soak them in honey and they let them sit there. So when it's hot and fresh out of the fryer, you put it in a big bowl and just put some honey on it. And as it cools down, it becomes glazed, okay? And it makes the outside crunchy and the inside so soft and it's so sweet. Don't ever put your game out in front of me because you're never going to get any more, okay? You won't have any more game out if you put a bowl of it in front of me. I'm going to eat it all. I'm gonna Mm. Ah. All of it is gonna go. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you something. Some people have made it a little bit, you know, with the time. They want to add their own flavor. They want to add their own little twist. Some people started putting some saffron in there. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. Some people start sprinkling them with sesame seeds. Not my cup of tea, but they do exist. It does happen. There are people who I disagree with entirely who will put seeds inside the dough as they fry it. And why do I not like it? It's because when I eat it, I'm surprised. I'm not, I'm, 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 it's supposed to be crunchy and sweet on the outside and then on the inside it's so soft. But then come out of this soft center, a hard substance that messes my chewing game. Yo, I get it. You want to experiment. But why has this become so common? Huh? Don't you know that the Qatari guy don't like that stuff? Huh? There are also desserts that are from other communities here in Doha that have made their way onto the dessert table in Ramadan. Yes, of course, I'm talking about knafa. Knafa is a Palestinian dish. It's got cheese, vermicelli pasta on top. They burn the pasta on the top and they melt the cheese on the bottom and soak it with syrup and like sweet, sweet syrup. Okay. And then they sprinkle crunched pistachios and then they cut it up into tiny little squares, okay, and they put it on a plate, and the syrup is called upam, which means drops, but when you give it to me, I don't mess around, I'm not drunk, I'm poor, so thank you for introducing Kanaba into our lives, okay, we appreciate it, because now it's part of us, and you have given it to us, so thank you, because Kanaba is a dessert that is very, very, very commonly consumed during the holy month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Another dessert that comes from Palestine or the Shamite region as a whole is Qatayif, which is little pancakey crepes. They make like stuffings. They're like cannolis almost, okay? They put the little stuffings and then they fold them and then they fry them. They close it so that none of the stuff that's inside gets out. And then they take it out again and introduce the most important ingredient of them. Syrup! Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you. Goodbye. Now, I hope you're watching this while you're fasting and you're salivating 
Look forward to it. Worry. Be strong. I hope you enjoyed this Q-tip. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions at all about Qatari culture, put them in the comment section below. Ding, ding! Don't forget to click the bell so that when we do something, you know about it, you watch it, we keep engaging, you keep us going. Thank you very much. Calicus thy bellus. I need to go have some of the game art because it's about time that I need to start my fast. So I'm gonna end it on something sweet. Bye-bye! <laughs>